The next one I want to talk about is B vitamins. So um, people are a little bit more aware about B vitamins because it's kind of a thing about B12. A lot of vegans have to get like B12 injections and stuff because they're obviously not getting any meat. So yeah, B vitamins are found abundantly in meat. B12 especially is only found in meat. Now, um, although with like vitamin B6 and other B vitamins, they are found in grains. Technically speaking, that is correct because like whole grains that before are manufactured and grown and traditional whole grains would have had them in it. But as soon as you put these whole grains into the, sorry, it's a little bit itchy this cardigan, but it's really warm and cozy. Um, as soon as you put whole grains into the manufacturing process, they are stripped of these nutrients, right? They are, they are, the nutrients are taken away and they don't have, provide any nutritional value to you. You are much better off eating other things with B vitamins in them and other plants and whatnot than eating whole grains. Um, so that's why often you'll see when you go to the supermarket, like if you look at grain packages, they've often been infused with like phosphorus or magnesium or B vitamins or whatever, or like fortified things, that sort of stuff, because in the manufacturing process, these nutrients are stripped out. So that's something for you to note, even though technically speaking, and I'm like, this is what I'm told at school with like nutrition and whatever, that, um, you know, there's, you know, B vitamins are great for whole grain. Actually think of my textbook. I know my textbook is it's somewhere it's out there um there was like cornflakes on there as like high vitamin b and i'm like what the actual fuck why is there cornflakes as one of the highest sources of b vitamins why is it and there's so much junk food as a higher source of b vitamins but it's because in the manufacturing process they actually put b vitamins and they fortified them in which is fine for some things i get that like folate and whatever i understand because you know there's, there's a big percentage of the population that won't eat healthy food so you know or they accidentally fall pregnant and they don't they haven't been taking prenatal supplements not that i need it's not that you need it definitely not that you need to take prenatal supplements that's a whole other argument because if you're eating a black balance diet with like liver and all these vitamins you should be fine um but they stuff they put those fortified things in for that area of the population that um won't be eating you know won't be getting folate from elsewhere um how did i go on to this topic anyway so yeah, whole grains are not a good source of vitamin B, like um, of B vitamins, unless you're literally hunting them in the wild or something. I don't fucking know, but don't think that whole grains are a good source of B vitamins because um, they're not. Plus, if you're eating a pile of grains, they're going to give you a whole pile of other problems, including, you know, they can cause digestive issues. The phytic acid and lectins in them are really hard for your body to break down. They have anti nutrients in them, the gluten in them, they're inflammatory. They can cause, you know, insulin resistance, you know, a multitude of other things. So, researchers have actually found that with B12, the current recommended daily intake of B12 is inadequate to maintain your B12 levels. It's actually been researched and found that the RDA of B12 should be three times that of what it's recommended. And let's go back to liver with the vitamin A. Liver is just so abundant, full of vitamin B12 and B vitamins. In actual fact, liver contains 200 times more vitamin B12 than any muscle meat does. So I've even said to vegetarian clients and whatnot, if you can manage this, get a little bit of liver into like lentil bolognese or whatever, because you're actually better off eating like organ meats and like bone broth where it's like really, really, really concentrated than, um, than just eating, you know, like a steak or whatever. Um, so yeah, liver is a pretty incredible food. And then back with pregnancy, having adequate vitamin B levels is super important because it helps reduce the risk of miscarriage and neural tube defects. So a really, really important part of having a very, very healthy baby. And I've said this to people before and I will say it again, you need to remember that you are responsible for your baby's whole entire life. What you are eating, your baby has no choice over, or what you are not eating, your baby has no choice over. If your baby is born with a heart problem or mental illness, like um, mental issues, you know, um, any health complications, and it could have been avoided by you eating meat to get adequate vitamin levels, that's not only unfair to you because you have to look after him or her for the rest of your life, but that's so unfair 
to your baby. Like, your baby doesn't have a choice. It has to live, it possibly has to live with that complication for a very long time. And I know there are vegan Instagram mamas and their whole world looks pretty and their babies look very healthy. And you know what? Maybe their babies are very healthy, but we don't know what they're going to be like in the future. Just because their two-year-old baby seems healthy now, like one, it's through a screen and they're only showing the positives and we don't know. Maybe there's actual health problems. And two, we don't know what that baby is going to grow up with or develop later in life or have complications with later in life because of a nutrient deficiency. So I'm just urging you to think about this from your baby's perspective and the fact that it has no say in what you're eating. Um, but also because, you know, it's nine months or maybe, maybe two years because you'd want to be eating like this before you conceive and then a bit after as well to help for, 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 breast, for, for breastfeeding. You'd want to be eating like this. But just think about it, please, because I just really care about babies. Okay. Liver is really, really high in folate and B12, which is really important for your health, your, the, the baby's health and development, but also for your baby's brain development and red blood cell count. Really, really important. Um, and like I said before at the beginning, so vitamin B12 can only be found in animal sources and it's essential for um, gene expression and meth methylation so that baby's DNA being formed, all that sort of stuff. And your baby's organ formation. So pretty, pretty vital component of the whole process. Um, and I think it's about, let me check, uh, yeah, 62% of vegetarian women are deficient in vitamin B12. And so I can only imagine it would be higher for vegans, but 62% of vegetarian women are deficient in B12. And let's remember that animal sources, most bioavailable source, your body can recognize it, supplements they are not in balance with other vitamins, um, all that jazz that I've already said before. Um, the next bit I want to go on to is K vitamins. So K2 vitamins are abundantly found in full fat dairy products and essential for your bones. So when you are pregnant, your baby will essentially borrow from your stores. So if your bones aren't a-okay and 100%, um, well, your baby is just going to strip whatever you've got left. And you, that's why um, maternal osteoporosis is like a real thing because your babies will actually take from what you've got. Um, but this whole maternal osteoporosis thing, people often think, or they've often been told it's a calcium deficiency. It's not a calcium deficiency. It's a vitamin K2 deficiency. And this is found in um, animal products, especially in full fat dairy products. Um, and I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm not going to get into the whole argument of whether dairy is good or dairy is bad. I personally don't eat dairy for various reasons. I know people that can eat dairy and they can tolerate it. Fantastic. Full fat dairy is always the way to go because it has more of the enzymes for you, for, for you to actually and able to be able to break it down. Um, but, uh, you know, cow's dairy is the inflammatory, the A1 casein, but if it's been fermented, and a lot of women, are, it's better, and a lot of women actually find that when they are pregnant, they can tolerate dairy, and even when, and when they're not pregnant, they're totally dairy intolerant, but being pregnant, they can totally, totally tolerate it. So that's just something to note as well when you do become pregnant. Okay, let's talk about saturated fat. This is one of my favorite things to talk about in terms of food because I just love it when I'm studying and researching or fucking hearing about something and saturated fat is bad. I'm like, guys, have we not established the saturated fat is not bad for us. It is so good for us. It's been around since we've been around. It's not a problem. Saturated fat is very good for you. It's not gonna clog your arteries. It's not gonna give you heart disease. It's not gonna kill you. It's really good for you. Like I said at the beginning, common, this would have been the first part, common sense. We have been eating animals for as long as we've been here. Animals have fat. We are still here. They don't clog our arteries. We were eating the animal fat. In fact, fun fact for you, in prime hunting, in like the peak hunting seasons, we would hunt for the fattest animals, just eat the fat and leave the muscle to another animal to eat because that was like the not good part of the animal. We knew that the fat was the most nutrient dense. So, all right, saturated fat. So, Dr. Weston A. Price, if you don't know him, Google him. He's, he's amazing, he's done a lot of research. In traditional cultures, women or couples that were trying to conceive would be given certain fertility foods. And these were a lot of saturated fat, butter, organ meats, fish, that sort of thing. Um, and then he also went on to find that um, with the traditional cultures that are still around today, their diet, 55 to 65% of their diet is made up of animal foods. And this totally echoes the findings of Weston A. Price um, and his findings that um, 
of all of the indigenous cultures and populations in the world, not one, not one survived with a solely plant-based diet. Not one. And he studied for a very, very long time across every continent, every country, not one indigenous, indigenous um, culture, population, whatever, um, has, has a solely plant-based diet. So that's a little bit about saturated fat. All right, now I'm going to get on to choline and glycine. So research has shown that choline positively affects your baby's hippocampus and the development of your baby. It is actually estimated that 94% of women are deficient in choline. 94% of women are deficient in choline. Hell, I'm probably deficient in, actually, I make conscious effort to eat a lot of choline, but 94% of women are deficient in choline. So you are probably deficient in choline and it's so essential for a healthy pregnancy. Liver, good old liver and egg yolks are the two foods that have the most amount of choline and having just two eggs a day nearly meets a pregnant woman, nearly meets half of a pregnant woman's recommended daily intake for that day of choline. So eggs are a really great source if you can't do the liver yet, then definitely go for the eggs, but liver is amazing for choline. Um, like vitamin B12, um, Choline and glycine, which I'll talk about in a second, are essential for your baby's DNA expression, for methylation, and for gene expression. So it's just not something to skimp out on. And once again, choline is something that is found in animal foods. It is not found um, abundantly in plant foods. It's found from like chicken skin and bone broth and all that sort of good stuff that you're not going to get with a vegan diet. Researchers also found that choline intakes that exceed the RDA have been linked to positive mental health outcomes for the development of babies. So that is choline. A whole pile of good shit as well. And chicken skin is delicious. So anyway, um, okay, the next thing I'm going to talk about is glycine. So this is the second last one I'm going to talk about, okay? So glycine along with choline are conditionally essential for pregnancy, meaning that you have to increase your intakes of it in pregnancy and your body will not make enough of it. So you need to be getting it from an external source is what, it, is what that means. Maybe it's not